Okay. For CIT 260, our first Java program in week one, I wanted to give you a demonstration of what's expected for the individual programming assignment this week. And so without any further ado, I've opened my text editor. I like to use Visual Studio Code when I'm just using a plain old text editor. And you can see here, I don't have any files in my directory, so there's nothing up my sleeve. I'm just gonna walk you through my process of writing a quick program that prompts the user for two numbers these will be the two sides of a triangle, and using those two sides, it will calculate the length of the third side using the Pythagorean theorem, the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it hypotenuse. And I'm doing this live, and I'm trying to do it in one take. So if I make mistakes, you're just going to get what you get. But they're learning experiences, right? So uh, we're going to create our first Java program. In Java, everything, all code has to be part of some class definition. So what we do is we create a class by typing public class. We give it a class name, hypotenuse. And using the Java syntax, we have an open brace and a closed brace that, clo that wraps the implementation of our class. And then we're going to have a main method because all we're going to do is run a quick program. We don't have to do anything else. So there's just a main. And to do that, we do a public static void main. And main is a function and it accepts an array of string objects called args. So if we wanted to, we could pass things in from the command line and these they would show up in this array of, of strings called args. We're not actually going to use those in this example though. Uh, so I'm gonna type out in pseudocode what we wanna do. First, we want to create something to read the values from the console as the user types them in. We're gonna prompt the user for side A. We're gonna prompt the user for side B. We're going to calculate the hypotenuse, which is side C. And we're going to print the result to the console. Okay. So in our class, in all of the examples and in the lessons, we use the scanner class. This is a built in class that Java comes with. We call that batteries included. It's built into the to the Java development kit. It's called a scanner and it knows how to read things from the keyboard and turn them into numbers for us automatically. So I need to create a scanner variable. The way I do this is I declare the type of the variable or what kind of object it is. So it's a scanner object. And I'm going to say keyboard. I'm going to name my variable keyboard. And then I'm going to create a new instance of a scanner object. You do this with a new keyword and then the class name scanner. And then we make this a function call because we're actually calling a constructor. So I've just created something to read the values from the console. And now I'm going to prompt the user for site A. So the way we prompt on the console is we use system.out.println. System is another built in class. And it has a variable called out, which represents the console. And print line is a function or a method that knows how to take a string of text and put it into the console. So I'm going to say enter the length of side A. And that will prompt the user. And then I'm, the user is going to type something in. I'm going to capture that with the keyboard and store it in a variable. So this variable is a type double. A double is a floating point data type, meaning you can have you know, stuff after the decimal. So I'm going to say double side A equals keyboard dot next double. So what I've done here is I've prompted the user to enter something and then whatever they type in, I'm going to store it in a numeric variable called site A. If they happen to not 
type in a numeric value. I, we're going to get an error here. That's not part of the assignment. So I'm going to pass over that and gloss over it. We'll get to that in week 11. Now we're going to do the same thing for side B. So system dot out dot print line. Enter the length of side B. And in Java, all statements end with a semicolon. And we're going to store what the user types in for side B in a variable called side B. So pause here for just a second and think about how what I'm about to type. Go ahead and pause. OK, now that you've thought about what I'm going to type, here it is. Double side B equals keyboard dot next double. OK. Now I'm going to calculate the hypotenuse. And let's elaborate a little bit. This is going to be the square root. I'm using kind of a functional notation because I don't have pretty pictures here, the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's going to be the hypotenuse. So this is what it looks like. We're going to have another numerical variable called side c, and it's going to get the result of the square root. The Java has another built-in function or built-in library called the math library. So math is a class with a bunch of static methods in it that can calculate basic math stuff. So one of those things is a square root, and I need to pass it a number. But our number is going to be a little more complex of a mathematical expression, which Java does like a champ. So we're just going to take our side A, and we're going to square it. There is actually a function to do a power of 2, but that makes it a little bit harder to read. I'm just going to illustrate that we, we can square stuff using the object times itself. So side A plus the square of side B. So that is my hypotenuse. Oops, not double. So now we're going to print it out to the user. So we use our system.out.print line again. And we're going to pass in this string called The length of side C is, and then we're going to concatenate it with side C. All right, so there's our program, and there are a couple of errors in here, and I left those in there on purpose so that to illustrate the point because you're likely going to have errors as you do this assignment and they're nothing to be afraid of. So I'm going to go to my command prompt. My editor has a command prompt built into it and I'm going to compile my program, Java C, which is the Java compiler, and I pass it my hypotenuse.java file. And it's going to do its thing and it's going to say I'm missing a something at the end of my line here and I think my editor had some trouble so if I save my file all right a little conflict resolution something got out of sync between my editor and my disk again I'm doing this in one take and you're getting all my bloopers so we'll save that. So it is saved now, and we can test this. We'll just close it, reopen it. Oops. Make sure it's the file that we want. There we go. Okay. So we'll clear our terminal, and we'll try this again. Java C to compile my Java program. Hypotenuse.java. And it looks like I've got two errors. So don't panic. So the first error is it can't find the symbol scanner. Okay, and that's the second error too. Both both errors are the same one. It doesn't know what a scanner is, and that's because we forgot to import the java.util package. So I can say import, and what the import statement does is it tells the Java compiler what other classes that aren't defined in this file I intend to use in this file. So all these built-in classes that Java provides in the JDK 
you can import and start using in your program. So java.util.scanner. So that takes care of that. And now let's try to recompile again. And I should get at least one more error. And I look at this. So there's a lot of output, but don't panic about it. What it is is saying there's no suitable constructors found for scanner with no arguments. So I created my scanner without telling it where it was actually going to read from. It could read from a file. It could read from the keyboard. It could read from an internet connection, et cetera. I need to be very specific about what I want it to read from. So I'm going to read from our system object and it's dot in variable, which is the keyboard. So system dot in reads from the keyboard system dot out writes to the writes back to the console to the, where the keyboard is typing. Okay. So system dot in. And if we compile that no errors. And now you'll see over here, this hypotenuse.class file just showed up. And if we try to open it, it's, it was, my editor doesn't want to show it because it's a binary file. It's not plain text. And if I pull it up in a hex editor, you'll see that it is a bunch of gibberish. It's all bytecode. This is the Java bytecode that the Java virtual machine is going to interpret and run our program. One piece of trivia here is all Java class files start with these four bytes that spell cafe baby or cafe babe. Just a little piece of fun trivia there. Um, all right, so we've compiled our program and now we just have to run it. So the way we run it is we call the Java virtual machine and that's just a program on your computer called Java and we pass it the name of our class, but we don't have to use the dot class extension because the Java virtual machine assumes that there's a dot class extension there. So we say hypotenuse, and look at that. So we're walking through my code here. Enter the length of site A. I'm going to enter the length of 10. And now here I am, enter the length of site B. I'm going to enter the length of 10 again. I do these two values because I know the output is going to be 14.14 something. And there is the result. So we calculated the result and then we printed it out. And that, my class, is all you have to do for the assignment.